We didn't talk about what I really wanted. He said the surgery would take less than 15 minutes. Are these your first two body implants? And my last. So how did that happen? Well. How does that work? So he pulled out the biggest needle I've ever seen. He numbed one side, and from there, he just cut me open. Did you ever have the thought, I know he's not a surgeon, but he's got drugs and <laughs> needles and a scalpel and surgical equipment, and he's operating on me? That didn't occur until after he already had this instrument in my skin, and I could feel it going up against yeah, my rib cage yeah. and separating. That's a blunt dissector. Yeah, sure. And of course, if he went a little bit the wrong angle, then he can puncture into your lung space yes. and collapse your lung. Easily. One of the reasons we go to medical school and learn things like, you know, anatomy and surgical technique is to prevent injuring adjacent structures, the liver and the lung, and other things that essentially, if you get too deep, will kill you. You don't put scars in the outside of the face. That's not the worst part. Uh-oh. On my last post-op, my appointment was really early in the morning, and I was waiting in the parking lot in the back, and there's this um, minivan that pulls up right next to me. This guy opens the door, falls out, and crawls over and starts pulling on my handle, and I notice that it's my doctor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> OK, wait a minute. Your Doesn't doctor's a drug addict. I, like, rolled the window down and was like, um, do you need something? He's all, let me in. And I was like, let me in. And I said, uh, and then he's like, just come inside, just come inside. He doesn't have shoes on. Oh. His hair is a mess. And Pulled an all-nighter. We get in the facility, and he's like, help me um, get one of his white jackets. There's no one in his office to help him? It's just um, the two of you alone? Just the two of us. But then the staff started coming in. He says, never speak a word of this. And I said, OK. Oh, boy. One of my model friends referred me to a guy. Her breasts look awesome. A guy? Yeah. Well, I mean, he was a dentist, but I thought he was a doctor. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Tell me I'm not about to hear that a dentist did your breast augmentation. He did. Tell me you didn't go back to the dentist asking for bigger ones. I did not, because he told me he wouldn't do anymore. OK. He. OK. Mm. I find this guy, do some research, and I tell him, I'm OK with the size, you know. I just want them closer together. OK. I wake up, and my boobs are, like, real huge. They were like, oh, well, we put 1,000 cc's in. You woke up with 1,000 cc's in each breast, almost double in each and breast. And no closer. No. And then he said, oh, I took them from under the muscle. Well, he took them from under the muscle to on top of the muscle? Yeah. Why? He said because the envelope or something was too small. I was like, OK. And wow. I started getting rippling. And like the implant did backflips inside my boobs. Oh, really? Yes. One nipple's here. The other one's like, mm. you know. Summer breasts. Some are here, some are there. <laughs> yeah. I was out with a friend, and I went back to his house. We were sitting in his living room, and the dog came and bit my face oh, even well. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was really devastating. Oh, my god. The strange odyssey started with plastic surgery, who then also did your nose, right? Yeah, and I didn't even need to have my nose done. What did you go into him for? About the lip, and he yeah, immediately and focused he, on the nose? Exactly. That's a red flag. A couple years later, I find out that he was actually on crystal meth. I thought I was going somewhere glitzy and glamorous, yeah. coming out like a model, and no. I was a model of disaster. Oh, jeepers. Wow. You have a silicone implant in there? I do, and it actually moves, if you can see it. So the whole implant is completely mobile. So what's going on with your abdomen? Again, bad luck. A year ago, I went in for a diagnosis of stage four cancer. They opened me all the way up. They're like, you have to have an emergency hysterectomy. I didn't have time to freeze my eggs. I had no time for anything. Are you the unluckiest person on the planet? I seem to be. How big were your so, breasts? They were size F. I met a plastic surgeon, and I went for a consultation with him. Oh, I can fix this. Everything's going to go well. Well, I woke up out of surgery, and I had nothing. You just chopped them off? From an F to a A, is, maybe? Is that what you wanted to do? Absolutely not. What did you tell him? Well, he felt that it matched my body. He thought the perfect breast size for you was an A. Yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm not a breast <laughs> surgeon. I even know that doesn't make any sense. No way in the world is a patient like this going to end up with an A cup? 
I, I, don't, I have no clue what the doctor was thinking. So when I turned 19, I found the closest doctor that was in my price range, mm. and I went. We didn't talk about size. We didn't talk about what I really wanted. He said the surgery would take less than 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fast. 15 minutes is way too short to do something as intense as plastic surgery. So this is before you guys met, yes? Yeah. Yes. yeah. When you met, though, you had this issue and yes. you had to explore yeah. romance. How did you deal with this? You have to show them how to take the duct tape off before you get intimate. Wait, wait, whoa. <laughs> what do you mean what? duct tape? <laughs> when, you, when you have four boobs and you want two, your best option is to just kind of tape them up. When intimate, it's, it's like clear tape. Seriously? <laughs> You're kidding, right? <laughs>